Hey Valley Metal, welcome back to another math video. Tonight we're going to be talking about how you make a turn a ratio into a percentage. But before we do that, as always, let's start with something fun. Who are these people and what do they have to do with this lesson? We'll be back with the answer to that and much more after our target. Tonight officially it's 4.6a. I can write ratios as percents. Let's do this thing. Let's jump right into some must-know words. Three of them you have to understand completely. Ratio. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities. And when you think ratio, I want you to think about this picture here. Two cookies to a glass of milk. It's the perfect ratio. That would be two cookies to one glass of milk. Or one cookie, one glass of milk to two cookies. You can reverse it as long as you specify how you're setting the ratio up. Is it cookies to milk or milk to cookies? Ratios can be written as words like two to one or just like I wrote here with a colon, two colon one. You must understand fractions in that fractions, the bottom number is the total number of pieces in a whole. So this is, these are the parts of a whole here and the top number are how many parts you have. So the parts are the top and the whole is the bottom. Look at the pizza. We have three parts out of four. There's a total of four. It's different from a ratio. There's no three here. We have three items here. We're just talking about two cookies to one glass of milk. We're here. There are four pieces of pizza and we've got that number four right there. All right. And you have to understand percentages. Percentages then are that number per 100. And you can see I've numbered 1 to 100 here and I've colored in the first 75 in red. So you can see completely that the red is the 75 percent of the 100. It's like a fraction. 75 out of 100, but it's always out of 100. So tonight to accomplish our target, we're going to need to get to a fraction um, to generate a percent. And we need to understand the ratio a little bit more before doing that. So let's take a look at this next slide. To understand the ratios, you again, you have to focus on comparison, the comparison of two quantities. So in a ratio, you can compare part to part. If you look at this picture here, we can go, well, there's one girl to three boys. I think this is from Boy Meets World, but one girl to three boys. And I've written it out there in words, and i also written it in colon form. Now, I could also say that there are three boys to one girl, too. So it's always part to part. Nowhere am I talking about the number of people in the entire group. It's just these, this part, the males, to the females. Now, I can also talk, talk part to whole, and this is where uh, using a fraction is appropriate. I can say that it's one girl out of four kids. And again, that denominator here is telling me that that's the number of people in, enti in, in an entire group. I could reverse it too, and I could say that there are three boys out of four kids. Once again, the denominator is the number of the total group. The numerator signifies that specified group. In this case down here, it's boys. Um, Sometimes we use whole to part. I don't think it's very used very often, but you could also say that there are four people to one girl. It's almost like a reverse fraction or the reciprocal of it. But to generate a percentage, we really need to get to a fraction, um, whole to, I'm sorry, not part to whole to part, but um, we need to get to a fraction, and then we need to divide and multiply. Okay? Let's try some examples. Here's a real simple example. In this case here, there are five puppies. Two of them are boys and three are girls. So if we look at the part-to-part -part relationship, the ratios of boys to girls are two to three, and they've written it here with a colon, two to three. All right. The ratio of girls to boys is going to be just flipping those numbers around. Girls to boys, three to two. And again, it's written with a colon. Now, if we look at that part to whole, we have to think about it as a fraction. So now the ratio of all pups, or ratio of boys to all pups, now here we've got the entire group, is going to be two, two boy pups, out of a total of five puppies. See the difference? Boys to girl, boys to group. And down here, of course, it's girls to group. Three to five. All right. So we can ask a question on this. So what are the percentage of puppies that are girls? Well, we know that there are a total of five puppies, correct? So that's the first thing we need to establish. We've got the total of five. There are three of them that are girls. 
three girl puppies out of five. So now we've established that fraction. And this is the easy part then, because we've done it in class so many times. We simply convert this into a uh, decimal. Three divided by five is 0.6. We multiply by 100 as we move that decimal two spots, and we have 60%. Slam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we got it. All right, let's take a look at uh, another example. I make Tropicana orange juice using the ratio of three parts water to one part juice. What percentage of my Tropicana OJ is water? So for all of these examples, I want you to first to make a picture just like I did. I think that's important that you can visualize it. It's an important skill. So I drew it out. Here's my one can of Tropicana, and here are my three parts water. One to three, and I labeled it. I also could go three parts water to one part juice. Again, I labeled it. Then comes the all-important question. How many total parts are there? Well, I can add them up. There's a total of three plus one or four parts, and three of them are water. So what percentage of my Tropicana OJ is water? Well, I've got my fraction, three parts water to a total of four parts. I've got that fraction. The simple stuff happens. Divide it, we get 0.75. Multiply by 100, we've got 75%. All right, let's work some together. All right, when I was a kid, we had four horses and 20 cows on our farm. What percentage of our animals were cows? Well, for those of you who don't know what a cow is, let's just go ahead and start. There we go. And uh, for those of you who like animal so sounds, uh, we got the horse, too. I know, I need more to do with my life and sit around and add sounds to this. But Okay, so when I was a kid, we had four horses and 20 cows on our farm. What percentage of our farm animals were cows? So here I've established 20 cows and four horses, and I labeled it. Now, I could reverse that and write it as four twentieths, too, but I think it's important to have that. The next thing is you have to establish how many total parts do we have because we're going to a percentage, so we've got to know how many in total. So we have the 20 cows plus the four horses. So now we're getting somewhere. So now we've got total animals. That's our total group, that denominator. That's 24. They're asking for what percent, percentage of our farm animals were cows. That's up top. That's the numerator. We have 20 of them. So it's 20 out of 24. If we put that into the uh, calculator, we're going to get 0.833 repeating. Once again, we move the decimal a couple of spots. We got 83.3%, or you could put this as 83.33, or you can use the repeating sign. I'm just kind of shortening things up here a little bit for you. Okay? All right. Next, we wonder if our friend Luke's uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi has any advice for us regarding this problem. Ben, what do you think? Luke, use the horse. Ben, that's really lame, but I like it. All right, let's try a couple more examples together. Uh, now I'm going to have you work on picturing it in your head yourself. For every $20 Tara deposits into her savings account, I add another $5. What percentage of her savings do I contribute? All right. Did you picture some dollar bills or maybe some $5 and $20 bills? That's what I would do right here. I would picture it like a $20 bill with a colon and a $5 bill. Okay, So this is going to be Tara's money, and then this is my money that I'm contributing. Or I could flip it around either way, but I have my colon, I have my picture in my head. So I need to know my total parts. So she's depositing a total of $25 because it's, it's the total of these two together, and my part of that is only $5. So it's 5 25ths. And if I put that into the calculator, I'm going to get 0.2. And then I can simply multiply by 100, moving that decimal, and I get my 20%. Okay? I have to put my screen up for this next one here before we try that and drag that down. Let's have you try working this one on your own. I think we're uh, at a point where you can do that. All right, so we're going to study this recipe. And what percentage of the pancake batter is made up of pancake mix? So basically, we've got mix and water. First of all, go ahead and picture what you would uh, draw on your paper or picture in your head as you do this problem. All right. For those of you who struggled a little bit, I'll uncover what I drew there. 
All right, now see if you can solve it. Figure out what percentage is made up of pancake mix. Go ahead and pause the video. Uh, you thought I was going to say I see dead people, but I didn't. All right, let's see how I solve the problem then. Well, how many total parts? Pretty simple, five parts. Three of those parts were pancake mix. Those are the three cups right there. So it's three over five. We switch that to a decimal by dividing. Three divided by five is 0 0.6. Move that decimal two places or multiply by 100. We have 60%. And you, my young friends, are ready for the ticket to the show. All right, there are three oranges and two strawberries in my fridge. What percentage are strawberries? And here's a bonus question. What is the ratio of strawberries to oranges? Slide that up, make sure you can see it. All right, time for the trivia question. Who are these people and what do they have to do with this lesson? This is Sister Encarnacion and this is Nacho Libre. Uh, and they have absolutely nothing to do with this lesson, but my son and his friends have been quoting this movie, Nacho Libre, all weekend long, and I thought I'd throw it in. No way! Those are all my favorite things, too! Nacho Libre talks like this. It's really funny, but stupid. Have a great evening. Bye.